This show is brought to you by Databrill, the scalable Amazon PPC management for large Amazon sellers and brands. Visit sellersessions.com forward slash agency for more details. Hey guys, welcome back to Seller Sessions. Uh, today we bring back Taylor Benterud. How are you doing? Good, what's going on? Yeah, oh, good, good. It's been a while since we've caught up. Where should we start? Should we talk about 2018, some forecasting? Give us a, a bit of a breakdown of what's been going on in the world of AMS. Yeah, so uh, we did a, we've done a couple things lately, like bigger analysis is just trying to look at our data because we've acquired a lot of data over the last couple of years, specifically on headline ads and product display ads. And in doing that, what we did is this huge analysis where we compared the performance of AMS to PPC, sponsored products. And when I say AMS, I mean only the headline ads and the product display ads compared to the regular sponsored product placements. So um, something super epic that you can do to basically figure out the health of your AMS or of your sponsored products. We did an analysis where we pulled like, I think it was 17 or 18 brands that we actually work with. These are bigger brands doing from $100,000 a month to $1.8 to $2.2 million per month. That was like kind of one of the biggest accounts. So we pulled the last 60 days of their sponsored product sales, spend sales, ACOS, last 60 days. And then we pulled the AMS, specifically, again, only product display ads and headline ads, last 60 days, spend sales, ACOS. And what we did is we literally just divided the spend from the AMS by the spend from the um, sponsored products. So we could figure out like how the, like the AMS spend compared to the PPC spend and how the AMS sales compared to that. So we could get a ratio to kind of better understand, okay, what percentage of sales did the AMS amount to compared to the sponsored products, right? So typical account we would see with the sponsored products would do $100,000 in a month at like a 25% cost and the AMS would do like 30 to $35,000 at like a 20 or 18% ACoS. Usually the ACoS is a little bit lower on AMS. The average cost per click is a little bit lower. But what we found when we did this crazy data dump is that when we pulled all the averages together, the average sales that you should see in AMS compared to sponsored products is actually between 25 to 35%. So it's in that range. So when you like, Basically, did I explain that well, by the way? Did you understand that? Yep, makes sense. Okay, cool. So the biggest thing that you need to be able to do right now in your Amazon business to just apply this, this practical uh, knowledge, I guess you could say, is take the spend and sales of your AMS from the last 60 days, spend and sales from your sponsored products last 60 days, and just put it into a Google Sheet. Again, it's like three columns, spend sales, ACoS, spend sales, ACoS, and divide the spend by each other and divide the sales by each other. And your AMS should amount to between 25 to 35%. That's a healthy benchmark. And if you see that your AMS sales result in 80% of your sponsored product sales, which means that if your sponsored product sales was 100,000, your AMS sales would be 80,000. That means that your sponsored product sucks. It doesn't mean that you're a master genius at AMS and you're great at sponsored products. That's, that's a huge red flag. Your sponsored product sales should never be that low. They should actually always be in that ratio of almost three times as great as the AMS. So we did this analysis about a month ago. And then what we did is we started applying it and we told our clients, hey, your sponsored product sucks. You need to go and do a lot of key research. They started doing that. And lo and behold, their sponsored product sales started to go up a lot because there was a lot of low hanging fruit. So it's just a great way to kind of figure out how much low hanging fruit there is. Cool. What kind of data were you looking at in terms of click through rates comparing some say like the product ads, click through rates and headline search to uh, sponsored product ads? Honestly, um, I didn't look at that data specifically when we did the analysis, but I know for like sure when I've looked at headline ads, like a healthy, like, click through click rate on a headline ad is above 2.2%. I've yeah. known that for yeah. almost like six months when I kind of looked at the data and did it. That's when you're bidding on keywords that are relevant to the product. Again, there's strategies where you bid on like correlated products. Like if you're selling a skateboard, you bid on like elbow pads or knee pads or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. on direct. Then neighboring, neighboring yeah. keywords and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Directly relevant keywords though, 2.2% plus. And honestly, I've seen like, like headline ads per perform at like four to five, sometimes even 6%. And these are competitive keywords. And that's just a matter of like better copywriting. Going from 2.2% to like 4% and 5% isn't a difference in like products or images or anything. It's usually actually just your copywriting. And I think most people don't actually look at the copywriting side of things. If you look at people's headline ads, they, they really suck. <laughs> they don't, yeah, people they tend suck. to rush them, don't they? It's like they sling them up there. They don't really think about, it's almost like Twitter. You've got so many characters to work. Yes, and impress. yes. And I think people don't make the most of that. They just knock out a load of headline ads and don't think about the language of which they're using. You could spend hours just running a spreadsheet coming up just different permutations. Yeah. Getting that message across. 
And the best thing you can do um, is basically in AMS, when you log in, there's this little download button, there's an arrow above the sales column and you click that and it downloads pretty much the, the last month or last 60 day, whatever date range you're looking at. And you can pull your top, pull like your top five campaigns, look at the click through rate in the last 60 days, look at your headline ad, and then just read a book on copywriting. There's like, there's a good book called words that sell and it like gives you phrases and just like, try to copy that campaign, change it with a different headline ad and see how the click through rate compares. Because if you're doing, you know, $20,000 a month at 10% A cost and your click through rate's 1.8%, if you increase that by like to 2.4%, the sales is going to go up drastically because it's already proven to convert. So it's a super low hanging fruit thing that uh, honestly nobody does. And in terms of manual management and bid changes, you've had a little bit of a, a nightmare there, haven't you? Yeah. So, um, what we tried to do is now everybody knows that the whole kind of AMS side of things, some of like Amazon kind of spooked everybody when they said, Oh, AMS is shutting down vendor, not AMS, sorry, vendor express is shutting down. And yes. so if you got into AMS through the back door, you know, your account's going to get shut down. Well, that's not the reality. I mean, you have till the end of 20, um, sorry, January 4th, 2019, I believe it is, if I'm not mistaken, but, um, you can also just hit up your AMS rep and they will tell you to keep your account. But, but what happened was we had a client who wanted to trans transition to Seller Central, not actually because of the whole spooky thing with Amazon, but because of the billing. He hated the fact that the credit card on the AMS was separate from Seller Central and was causing accounting um, problems and stuff. And so we tried transitioning to um, uh, Seller Central. This is actually about like two months ago. It was a while ago. But when we yeah. did that, we don't have an automated uh, bid management system on Seller Central. And it just... Yeah. Killed. Like even though we copy pasted the campaigns at the same bids, which you would think they should perform the same yeah. because we yeah. didn't have a bid management software in place to manage it. We just got destroyed. And so I came to the conclusion and told everybody in our company, I was like, look, we are never going to manage any, anything ever again if we don't have software to do it. Because when you're managing hundreds of campaigns in one account with thousands of keywords, I mean, good luck. I mean, you're, you're going to get, you're just going to be a lot of blood, like bleeding. So, yeah. um, yeah you're dead if you're trying to manually change bits. <laughs> so what happened there? Did you just shift it all back into, into AMS or? Um, so yeah, we basically are in the process of shifting it back into AMS, which isn't a fun process. So that's why I never recommend um, doing that unless you have a bit automation in Seller Central that you, can, that you can basically work with. And we're in the process of building it because we have some clients that, that want to transition over. So we have to yeah. kind of adapt. Cool. Is there anything else we can cover here? Um, I don't think so. Nothing new is in the AMS. The UI hasn't changed at all. Um, so I don't think there's anything else new. The analysis that we did on the forecasting is probably the most important thing to get your like benchmark on how healthy your account is. Yeah, no problem. Uh, what about product ads? Is there anything you're doing at the moment? Any new uh, product display ads? Yes. Um, so one thing you can do uh, that we that we started testing and we don't have a whole lot of data on it But the early data that's coming in looks good is if you see that you have a product display ad That's really crushing. I mean, this is within our company. What, how we do it is we call them um, Master diamond ASINs. They're called MDAs in our nomenclature of our campaigns yeah. And these are ASINs in the search term report that have I think it's four orders or greater at a less than like break even a cost and break even a cost is just your profit margin on the product. So we take these ASINs out of the search term report, put them into their own campaign within AMS, put a high bid on them. And when I say high bid, I mean like 87 cents, $20 budget, we keep it simple. But when these things start to perform really well, then what we'll do is we'll take that master diamond ASIN that we're bidding on that competitor ASIN that we're stealing a lot of sales from at a profitable a cost. And we'll just do a reverse ASIN on it and we'll pull extract all the keywords out. And that campaign has shown early signs. And when I say early signs, I mean like two weeks ago of performing um, really well, like there's some unique keywords that otherwise we wouldn't have found. So take your top performing product display ads, do a reverse ASIN on those competitor ASINs that you're stealing sales from at a profitable rate, see, and then basically take those keywords from that reverse ASIN and, and dump it into a campaign. Cool. So I was going to ask you that because I don't think we've discussed this. I've obviously had this chat with Sean and Brian Johnson and stuff. What okay. tools are you doing for using for keyword research? Um, I'll be honest. We use merchant words for about 90% of everything we do. And then the rest wow. is pretty much the search term report. And so a lot of people say that like, oh, Cerebro, like many codes has some good tools. Keyword Inspector yeah. has, is a good re reverse ASIN tool. And um, I've dabbled with these tools and tested them before, but we have so many automations built around merchant words. And I can't even like, I, I could get into it. It's basically, we have like relevancy score things. And I know many codes has that built in, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And uh, what's his name? River Cleaner? Yes. From, he's a good research tool as well. Yeah. 
Um, the, like I talk to people that swear live and die by it, but all the results we've got have been basically built off of merchant words. And I mean, we haven't been quick to change and so probably the low hanging fruit within our agency, the one thing that we could actually do better and change. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I mean, the, I mean, with most of the tools, not all of them, but with most of the tools, like mm-hmm. from my understanding, merchant words isn't Amazon real data. It's algorithmic yes. base. Yeah, exactly. But then what, you know, the data that we tend to use is the AMS data, you know, like, because obviously if you run in, you yes. run in an AMS account, you can obviously find the keywords. And I know that uh, Manny saw and, and a few others, I think uh, viral launches tool as well. They're oh, using yes. um, real Amazon data, which I'm assuming, and I'm just assuming here, it is the AMS data that's being pulled. That's exactly it. That's, that's the key player yeah. for me. So I'll still use reverse ASIN. I'll still use... Um, Manny's tools. I'll still use viral launch. I've got all the tools and I use a combination of all of those. Yeah. But, but ultimately if you're selling uh, a spatula yeah. and it's called a spatula. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> spatula is the keyword. You know? So know. We, we can dance around with micro conversions and it's good if you've got a big marketplace where you go into the long tail and all this stuff's very important. But ultimately searches if there's a, a generic name for something generally that's not be the winner but generally that's the one with the most search for vo- uh, search volume and that's yes. the most expensive keyword so we have to diversify i think yeah. that's why it's important that we use all of the different platforms yeah. send in external traffic sponsored ads ams you know yeah. product launches in terms of doing giveaways all of these things to, to touch on it, a um, little bit different scenario for us because we work with sellers that are doing like at least $100,000 a month, even a quarter million. So they already have a lot of sponsored products data and they've usually hired out an agency or they've been like yeah. spent money on their sponsored products. So when we come into the AMS, it's a total like a shit show for lack of better words. Mm-hmm. And um, there's like no campaign set up. So actually when we set up our campaigns, we have two stages when we go into an account, we set it up. It's called ASS1 and ASS2. ASS1 is an account set up stage one which is all the data is pulled from the search term report, 100% of it. And we label those campaigns as ASS1s from the search term report data. And then we have ASS2, which is using like merchant words or, or reverse ASINs from Keyword Inspector um, or Cerebro. And 85%, if not 90% of our sales actually comes from the search term report in AMS. It's ridiculous because all of the top performing data is usually in there. And then the cure research that we do on top of that is usually only an additional 10%. So, I mean, when it comes to just focusing your energy on AMS, if you do have a lot of data and sponsored products, don't go straight to merchant words. Just go into your search and report and pull all, like, all the keywords and then like segment it by product. Sounds good. Cool. Anything you want to add just before we go? Um, I think that's it. Uh, the, oh, the last thing I wanted to touch on was the fact that um, we kind of in our agency have hit a point where we're basically not really taking on any more clients. And we're more so focusing on building like an intensive kind of seven week training program to teach people what we do to get the same results that we would get them as an agency. But yeah, yeah. we don't want yeah. to take on any more clients. We're kind of in that stage where um, I guess you could hit, we, you could say we hit a glass ceiling, but I also want to kind of transition out and be able to kind of help more people with less um, service, I guess you could say. Yeah, no worries. Sounds good. Um, best way that people can reach you? Um, you can reach me. I, I would just search Taylor Bentrude on Facebook. I actually been posting more on Facebook. I haven't done it in the last two weeks. I've been in Miami with the family on vacation. <laughs> it was in Disneyland. It was, it was terrible. I don't actually like Disneyland nowadays. It was gone a lot as a kid, but yeah, just hit, search my name up on Facebook, Taylor Bentrude, and you'll see a photo of me. Um, sounds good. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Taylor, thanks for joining us. If this is your first time, do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Take care.